Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. courtroom drama for our former president, the orange one, this uh, morning. Don Trump was back in the warm embrace of the American judicial system, the only place that truly loves and appreciates him. He had cases going in both New York and Georgia today simultaneously. This is his version of uniting the country, criminal trials in the North and the South. But <laughs> Trump unsuccessfully tried to get his trial in New York dismissed today, while he's also trying to get the prosecutor in Georgia dismiss. It's a real Dismiss America pageant that he's running. It <laughs> didn't work out in New York. The judge set a date. And it's really finally happening. An actual criminal trial against Donald Trump will begin on March 25th. Yeah. This one <laughs> is... This one's for the least serious of his many indictments. He's accused of violating campaign finance laws by using funds that were donated to make hush money payments to women who said they had sex with him. He's too cheap to pay the hush money himself. <laughs> He's so dumb. Between $130,000 to Stormy Daniels and $150,000 to Karen McDougal, no one in history has ever paid this much for 35 combined seconds of sex. <laughs> But he's presenting a... He's got an interesting defense. On this one, he's claiming that paying women to be quiet is not a crime. He it's basically a, a porking ticket. It's not a crime. We're here for something that is not a crime. Literally, legal experts, legal scholars said they don't understand it. There's no crime. And there was no crime here at all. Virtually every legal scholar says they don't understand it. There's no crime. Even if he was guilty of something, there's no crime. <laughs> well, even if he was guilty of a crime, for instance, there's no crime. Your Honor, if there's anything I'm guilty of, it's loving too much. <laughs> And then tomorrow in New York, the judge is expected to rule in the $370 million civil fraud case against Trump. Let me tell you something. He has to pay $370 million. We're about to see an explosion unlike any we've ever witnessed before. I would love to be a, a fly dodging ketchup bottles on the wall for that moment. I really would. I cannot. If this trial is taught, if it's taught us anything, it's that Donald Trump definitely doesn't have $370 million. It might be time to fire up a new round of digital trading cards because <laughs> Trump's lawyers keep arguing in multiple courtrooms, they're arguing their client can't possibly be tried for these crimes because he's too busy running for president to be on trial, which is quite a defense. You know, anyone can run for president. All you have to be is born here and over 35 years old. Like if Harvey Weinstein decided to run for president, he, you think he could say, sorry, I'm just too busy for the trials. I got to put... <laughs> I'm putting signs on lawns, okay? <laughs> Tony Soprano was in Charleston, South Carolina last night where um, he took some time to boast about his golf game and complain about chubby photos. Did you see the picture of me, the horrible picture with the stomach out to here? That was... So what I do is I'm putting up today a picture of me actually, what I actually look like, hitting a ball, smashing the frickin' ball. And you'll see quite... I wouldn't say slim. I wouldn't say slim, but not bad. But the ball does go far. I would say it goes about nine times further than Biden can hit it nine That's times. Right. Well, you know, and in that case, you got my vote if you can hit a ball. 
nine times further. And what picture is he even talking about? This is one of those things where he's pissed off about something nobody else even knows about. So then we look it up and we know about, but I still don't know which picture it is. I mean, is it this picture of him? Is it, is it this one? Is it, is it this one? I don't know, there are so many, I don't know which fatty shack I'm not supposed to look at. And by the way, that not bad picture of him smashing a ball, he said he was gonna post, he never posted it. Somehow he wasn't able to locate that one. Trunks, he's digging deep this time. He's trying to work all the angles. He loves pushing the Joe Biden is too old to be president narrative, but it blows up in his face because he has a lot of senior moments himself. He thought Obama was still president the other day. He confused Nikki Haley with Nancy Pelosi, which is embarrassing. So now what his claim is that he does that on purpose. And I say, that Obama is the president of our country, ba ba ba. They go, he doesn't know that's Biden. He doesn't know. So it's very hard to be sarcastic. When I interpose, because I'm not a Nikki fan and I'm not a Pelosi fan, and when I purposely interpose names, they said he didn't know Pelosi from Nikki, from Tricky Nikki, Tricky Nikki. <laughs> he didn't know I interpose and they make a big deal out of it. I said, no, no, I think they both stink. They have something in common, they both oh, stink. Oh, I see, you were, I, you were interposing. You were being sarcastic. <laughs> now, how do you explain the fact that you don't know the definition of the word interpose? Because <laughs> you don't, I love when he learns a new word and then uses it over, I was interposed, I interposed. Meanwhile, <laughs> over at the White House, uh, President Biden, you know, they interpose that he isn't too sharp, but he is crushing it with the granddad jokes right now. What are you giving up for Lent? Good one. Hey, you know what? You ask for malarkey, you get malarkey. Now, <laughs> let the man enjoy his mall walk in peace, will you? One thing Americans do not appear to be giving up for Lent is this idea that Taylor Swift is part of a very complicated conspiracy to reelect Joe Biden. According to a new poll from Monmouth University, almost one in five Americans believe that Taylor Swift was created to be some kind of government psyop to sway the outcome of this election, which, let me tell you something, Taylor Swift is uh, some kind of puppet in a psyop operation. Someone at the CIA is one hell of a songwriter. But <laughs> um, one in five Americans, according to this poll at least, I feel like one in five Americans believe pretty much everything. One in five Americans believe there were microchips in vaccines. One in five Americans believe QAnon. One in five Americans believe Obama wasn't born here. Four out of five dentists recommend sugarless gum for their patients who chew gum. And you know what that means. One out of five dentists don't. But there are crazy people out there spreading this stuff to other crazy people. One of them is a woman named Ann Vandersteel. She's one of these right-wing podcasting bats who coincidentally looks like if you left Taylor Swift in a hot car all weekend with the windows up. <laughs> But anyway, she's convinced that Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are agents of Pfizer who do the deep state's bidding and I guess play football and make music on the side. I don't know, but <laughs> Ann tweeted right after the Super Bowl that uh, the score of the game is proof. She wrote, score last night, 25-22 equals 47. Yep, that is the F you to all of us. Swifty and her beard are Pfizer's biatches and will be deployed to get Biden reelected or whomever the cabal decides needs to be the next meat puppet. If you, now, if you don't speak QAnon, uh, they're obsessed with the number 47 because that's what number the next president will be, except that Joe Biden is the 46th president, and if Travis and Taylor successfully use their magic vaccination powers to get him reelected, he won't be the 47th president. <laughs> he will still be the 46th president. That's how it works. That's why there have been 56 ele 59 elections, but only 46 presidents, which what she should be focused on is 59 minus 46 equals 13. What's Taylor Swift's favorite number? 13. She was born on the 13th. She turned 13 on Friday the 13th. And the 13th letter of the alphabet, Ann, is M, which is the first letter of the word moron. So um, <laughs> what a stupid time to be alive. And nobody's feeling dumber today than Tucker Carlson. Uh, Mr. Moscow is cheerleading in Russia. 
visiting their supermarkets, their subways. He went there last week to interview Vladimir Putin. And you know who wasn't impressed by him? Vladimir Putin. Putin said, I was expecting hard questions, and he didn't ask me any hard questions. I think he was the only one expecting hard questions. But basically, uh, Putin was expecting to eat Tucker for lunch. Turned out he was more of an hors d'oeuvre, an amused douche, if you will. <laughs> It is very funny to me that Vladimir Putin, one of the most evil and anti-American people alive, finally met Tucker Carlson, who's been kissing his ass so long they had to have a squeegee on hand <laughs> to keep it dry. And Putin's takeaway was, eh, this guy sucks. <laughs> Putin said uh, in an interview, later in an interview, he said he hopes Joe Biden beats Donald Trump. He said Biden is better for Russia because he's more predictable. He also said he would absolutely hate it if we all changed our passwords to passwords. So don't do that. <laughs> we can't trust Russia, no matter what Tucker Carlson said. According to Republicans on the House Intelligence Committee, Russia wants to put a nuclear weapon in space, which I can't believe I'm saying this, sounds like a job for the Space Force, you know? <laughs> they say that the nuke would not, be, uh, would not be to use against people, but rather to take out the satellites that control our internet and, in other words, they're gonna hit us where it really hurts, right in the porn. <laughs> this wouldn't happen under President Trump. He'd build a space wall, he'd make Jupiter pay for it, but do the Russians really need nuclear weapons to disrupt our satellite connection? I can't even get ESPN when it rains, all right? <laughs> but don't worry, Congress is handling it. And as you know, yesterday was Valentine's Day. I got a text from Guillermo last night at 11.17. He sent me a text that said, what, Guillermo? Done. Done. Yes. So what does that mean? That I made sweet love to my wife. You did. Yeah. And I was thinking Done. of you and I sent you the text. Yeah. At 11.15, he texted, I'm going in. <laughs> Good no, for you. Good for you. Thank you, Jimmy. Yes. Yes, What's congratulations. Good? You know, there's a lot of pressure on Valentine's Day for men and women. So um, we went down to the farmer's market here in LA this morning to conduct a poll. And here's what we asked. What are you guys' names? I'm Janisha. I'm DJ. And where are you guys from? Cleveland, Ohio. Ohio. Wonderful. Did you guys do it last night? <laughs> now we have to guess all together, do we think uh, Janisha and DJ did it last night? What do you think, yes or no? Yes! All yeses, well, let's find out. Man. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 we was drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite drunk enough, I guess. All right, all right, let's meet another couple. Hi, guys, what are your names? I'm Wendy. Uh, I'm Jen. And where are you from? We are from Malaysia. Yeah, we are from yeah. Malaysia. Let all me right. ask you, did you do it last night? Okay, what about this couple from Malaysia? Did they do it on Valentine? Do they even know the term do it in Malaysia? I don't know. <laughs> Audience, you say? We are mixed. Well, let's find out. Uh, what do you mean, do it last night? <laughs> do it like, uh, let me show you. Oh, oh no. No, no, no. No? Yeah. No. Uh, Look at that. <laughs> and a new menu item at Duncan was born. Who is our next lucky couple? Hey, guys, what are your names? Uh, my name is Lino. Maida. And where are you from? Connecticut. Wonderful. Yeah. Did you guys do it last night? All right, did Lino and Maida make Valentine's love last night? We said... Uh, survey says yes. Well, buddy, with a hot boy like this, you gotta do it. You know what I mean? Especially when you're So that's a yes. I think so. I will something for you. <laughs> you guys don't want to have a 30-year-old. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, let's, shall we do one more? Uh, okay, here we go. Hi, guys, what are your names? Heather Capes. Jody Capes. Is this your daughter? Yes. Hi, I'm Sam Capes. Wonderful. Let me ask you two. Did you do it last night? <laughs> Before we vote, let's just take another look at their faces here. It's been, it's mom, and there's dad, and, and daughter. All right. <laughs> All right, what do you think? Did they do it last night? This is embarrassing. Well, let's find out. Here we go. Absolutely not, because we were sleeping in the same hotel room as our daughter. Unfortunately not. <laughs> I feel a little bit. Uncomfortable. 
Well, that might be the last family vacation for quite some time, huh? <laughs>